What's up, everybody? This is the Chicago Sports Talk Michael back at it again with my last Chicago Bears video of the season. Um, the Chicago Bears will be going up against the Green Bay Packers. Now, I do appreciate y'all sticking around for the season. If you are new to the channel and you want to be here for the offseason, I do recommend hitting the, the subscribe button and hitting the bell notifications if you are new to the channel to be uh, get updates for the off season. I will be taking a long break from this channel. Um, I'll say until the beginning of um, to the beginning of uh, free agency. And I may be doing like some mock drafts here and there. But I'm not going to be like posting freely Chicago Bears videos because there's mostly going to be nothing because we're going to have a lot to discuss about Black Monday, who will get fired, who will stay. If Justin Fields is going to be the quarterback, Matt Eberflus is going to be um, the, the head coach for this team going forward, which it is expected by Per Ian Rappaport that he will return. But anything could change in 24 hours, folks. But going into this matchup, the Bears are a three-point underdog in this, um, especially going to Lambeau Field and the Packers. I have to, I have to eat crow while I'm saying this. Um, the Packers and Jordan Love have been playing good football lately, and I would say Jordan Love's development is because of head coach Matt Lafleur. Head coach Matt Lafleur has been the main reason Jordan Love has been developing. Is he Aaron Rodgers? Is he Brett Favre by any means? No, but he's at least turning into his ceiling to be a solid quarterback in the NFL. And to be honest, I see him more as Kirk Cousins, and I'm going to explain why, because it may sound absolutely ridiculous for me to compare him to Kirk Cousins, but – it's just some games Jordan Love looks very good where where you saw against the – if you – let me compare this. You saw the game against the Minnesota Vikings the second time where Jordan Love absolutely looked like Aaron – looks looks exactly like Brett Favre. And, and the Kansas City Chiefs, same thing. You see good games out of Jordan Love, and then you see some bad games out of Jordan Love, which I would say, hey, that's, that's kind of Kirk Cousins because – from the majority of the times that Kirk Cousins has been in Minnesota, me being a Bears fan, he's had good and bad, bad games. Now, I do want to say this. Jordan Love is doing this with no legitimate wide receivers. He has no legit number. Like Christian Watson, yeah, he is a uh, – I, I don't think he's anything like a number one, like a Mike Evans, a Tyree Kill – a DJ Moore even. I don't think he's anywhere near that level of superstar. I do think if the Packers want to compete, they need a superstar receiver, which they don't really usually get superstar receivers until like the later rounds. So this matchup is going to be uh, pretty difficult for the Chicago Bears, especially because the simple fact that they have, and I repeat, have not beaten the Packers in Lambeau Field since 2015 during Brett Favre's uh, retirement jer jersey uh, ceremony. So this game needs to have any means of the Chicago Bears season. I know the Bears are eliminated from playoffs, but why not end the year by playing spoiler to end the Green Bay Packers season? Let's talk about the Packers offense real quick. Um, their offense uh, relies on Jordan Love staying in the pocket, delivering uh, dots down the field. So, and also Aaron Jones has a history of having good games against the Bears. So, and the Bears run defense from week one, from now is the Bears have an elite run defense. So if you are the Chicago Bears, the key thing is pressure Jordan Love and make Jordan Love beat you on his own instead of beating you by what Matt LaFleur is designing him. 
And if you remember the week one matchup when the Chicago Bears were playing the Green Bay Packers, um, we had no pressure whatsoever on Jordan Love. He only got sacked, I believe, one or two times. And we cannot allow Jordan Love to have any time in that pocket to breathe. So if you are Matt Eberflus and you want to solidify keeping your job next year, it is to develop pressure on Jordan Love and make him beat you on his own. And trust me, I'd rather have Jordan Love beat me on his own than Jordan Love beating you on uh, Matt LaFleur's designs. So that's going to be a key for defense. Also, Christian Watson, at the time, I'm assuming he's going to play because he was limited today. I'm going to have to assume that he's going to be limited or practice fully. I do think he will play. So the key thing is to contain Christian Watson by any means. If he even catches the ball, he'll sprint and try to take that crap to the house. And you have to lock him down by any means necessary. If Romeo Dobbs beats me, so be it. If Jalen Reed beats me, so be it. I'm not letting Christian Watson beat me by any means. And their offensive line, um, this is the reason why I say pressure is because they did lose their starting left tackle, David Bartiari, for the season. So I do believe they do. Um, and I also believe Elton Jenkins will also be not playing this game. And they do have another right tackle. I might have to look. But they have – that offensive line needs to be an open door for a defender. So get Montez Sweat, get Javon Dexter, get um Andrew Billings, get get Justin Jones, get Ep- like Jordan Love should not have any time to breathe in that pocket by any means. You know it. And also talk about the Packers defense. The Packers defense, um. Again, I believe I've been telling Packers fans for for the past, I'm going to keep pounding it until you get rid of them. Joe Barry has been the reason why this defense, uh, of the Packers defense, you could absolutely torch in many ways possible. You could torch them by in the air, or you can torch them by running the football. Now, what would I do? Since it's cold, it's going to be a coldy day in Green Bay. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to pound the football down their throats. And with uh, Dante Foreman, I don't think he's going to – I don't know if he's going to be playing. But if he doesn't, you got you got Khalil Herbert, you got Roshan, and you can use Justin Fields on uh, with the running uh, – his running ability. So if you are Luke Getze and you want to – Increase your chances of staying here, even though it's very slim and you're on a thin leash. You have to do a good game plan to Justin Fields' strengths that game and have him have a good run game. Also, target DJ more often. Darnell Mooney is not going to be playing this game, I have a feeling. And Cole Komet, I think he will play this game, but I wouldn't be surprised if he has like uh, like maybe like I wouldn't be surprised if we use him again like we did against the Falcons where he was just basically a decoy. So target DJ more by any means necessary. You're eliminated from playoffs. I don't care anymore. Just throw it deep. If DJ Moore catches it again, DJ Moore and Justin Fields have been an absolutely good duo. And that's part of the reason why I do not want Ryan Poles to break up this duo by any means necessary because they have been dynamic together. DJ Moore had two targets week one. That is unacceptable. That should have, that should never happen, especially when they're looking hot right now. I do believe if you are Justin Fields and Luke Getze, get DJ Moore involved down the field. And key number three is to keep the uh, gas on the pedal. And because the Bears have been blowing leads, they have three blown leads so far in the season. The key f- fact uh, three is to keep gas on the pedal, and we have to we have to score not only field goals, 
We have to score touchdowns most likely because this Packers offense, especially under a good head coach and Matt LaFleur, they can they can they play to win. And I'll give Matt LaFleur credit where credit's due. Matt LaFleur plays to win. And if you're and the Chicago Bears defense, they have been playing very good under Matt Eberflus. And that's because of the Montez Sweat trade. Montez Sweat is having a career year. So I do believe in my humble opinion heart that the Bears defense needs to have and needs to play better than they did week one because week one was very unacceptable because that whole defense is is a complete different defense from where they're at right now because the corners are playing a lot better. The edge rushers are playing a lot better and the secondary is playing a lot better. And in my humble opinion, folks, this game will determine Justin Fields' career, Matt Eberflus' career, and mostly the whole entire team going forward. And the chance to play, spoilers to the Green Bay Packers, and even Packer fans, even one Packer fan in particular that I, that I know has said that he, um, he, this is the great, this is one of the best Bears teams that the Packers have ever faced. So, and Joe Barry, like I said, you can attack him anyway. Yes, he did have a good game against the Vikings, but that was against Jared Hall, and they should have started Joshua Dobbs. But Bryce Young, and let me tell you this, Bryce Young, Tommy DeVito, and Baker Mayfield literally lit up Joe Barry's defense. If those guys can do it, I gear, I, I can assure you Justin Fields and DJ Moore can do it. So who do I have winning this game? Um, this is actually the only time I'm ever going to be very confident in myself. Me trying to be an optimistic Bears fan and a realistic Bears fan, trying to have uh, this balance. Because going into the season, I was a optimistic Bears fan going in this year, and that has not turned out being right whatsoever but as far as being balanced and me being unbiased i'm sadly not gonna pick the bears to lose this game i have a feeling that justin fields is playing for his job he's playing for his life same with matt eberflus give me the bears in this game at a score of 27 to 23 i do believe the bears will win this game because they have nothing to lose and they're going to play more aggressive than the Green Bay Packers because the Green Bay Packers are playing aggressive to make it in. They need one more win in their end. But the but the Bears want to play spoiler and they want to get revenge for week one. So give me the Bears in this game. And I do believe my offensive player will um game will always be Justin Fields. I believe he'll have a good I believe he's gonna have a good game. Maybe not through the air about and but then again I didn't expect Justin Fields to be dynamic through the air uh, last game against the Falcons, and he ended up torching the Falcons defense. So I'll have to go with Justin Fields. As far as my defense player, the MV, uh, defensive player, I'll have to go and give it to Montez Sweat. Give me the Bears in this one. I appreciate y'all coming together and watching these videos daily. I love y'all to death. Bear down. Thanks for watching.